In the last video, we introduced the concept of the product moment correlation coefficient. If we had two variables, say x and y, the product moment correlation coefficient told us the strength of the correlation between the two. We looked to find values of r. They were between negative and positive one. The value of r being negative one gave us perfect negative linear correlation. Value of r to be one was perfect positive linear correlation. If we had r equal to zero, we could say that there was no linear correlation. In this video, we're going to look at working with larger numbers and use coding to make our work easier. It's important to state at this point, linear coding doesn't affect the value of r. So if we had two variables, let's say we had x and y, we could apply a linear transformation to those. So we could say that p was equal to ax plus b. We could say that q was equal to c y plus d. As long as a and c are greater than zero, we can say that the correlation between p and q will be identical to the correlation between x and y. So I haven't applied any non-linear transformations. So for example, having squared or square rooted these, we are just looking now at linear scaling or linear transformations. So let's go ahead and see this in action. We're told a company owns two petrol stations, P and Q, along a main road. Total daily sales in the same week for P, which is P pounds, and for Q, Q pounds, are summarised in the table below. So here's our week, we've got P pounds and we've got Q pounds. When these data are coded, using X is equal to P minus 4365 over 100, and Y is equual to Q minus 4340 over 100, the sum of X is 48.1, the sum of Y is 52.8, the sum of x squared is 486.44, the sum of y squared is 613.22, and the sum of xy is 204.95. We're asked to now, in part A, calculate sxy, sxx, and syy. So they've gone ahead and been kind and done all of these for us. We might have a question where we need to apply these codings ourselves. So if we just consider now the first value of x, all we would do is sub in now 4760 minus the 4365 and we would divide this by 100. So all I would have now on here is 3.95. So I've subbed in the value of P, I've subtracted away the 4365 divided by 100, I got 3.95. So in some questions we might want to now put a column just here and say that this was going to be 3.95 and we might have to work them out themselves ourselves fortunately they've done it for us okay so let's go ahead and work out sxy sxx and syy so we can say now that sxy is going to be the sum of xy minus now the sum of x multiplied by the sum of y over n where n is the number of items we got as this is a week that makes our work quite nice so what we've got then is sxy is going to be the sum of xy. We've got this value just here. That's going to be 204.95. We're going to subtract away now the sum of x multiplied by the sum of y. So it's simply the multiple of these two. So 48.1 multiplied now by the 52.8. So 52.8, I'll try and squeeze that on, divided by the 7. So let's go ahead and calculate that. So we've got SXY. Now we're not asked to give this to a level of accuracy, so I'm going to round my answers now, generally to two decimal places, although I will write out the full amount here. So what we've got then is the 204.95. I'm gonna subtract away from that now the 48.1 multiplied by the 52.8 that we've got. So let's just check all of those are in right. So times the 52.8. We're going to divide this by n. n is 7. That's the number of data observations that we've got. So we've got now negative 157.8614 and so on and so forth. So let's write this out. Negative 1.157.8614. Uh, what was it? 8, 8, 6, 1, 4, so 8. 6, 1, 4, dot, 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 and so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do is write SXY will be equal to negative 157.86, and that's now to 2DP. What I'm going to do is store this in the calculator, and I'm going to store this as A. 
when I come on to further work in this question, I'm going to need to use this and I'm going to need to keep it with a high level of accuracy. So let's go ahead, shift, store, A. That's now in as A. You might want to write out your whole calculator display here. So that's the first one done. So let's go ahead and just line that off. So that's done. Let's go ahead now and find the next one, which is SXX. So SXX is going to be the sum of X squared minus the sum of X squared over N. So what we've got then, and I'll just make this slightly clearer, we take the sum of X, which is 48.1, we square it and we divide it by N. So you can see the subtle difference in the notation. I'm squaring this term, yet this is the sum of X squared. If you like, this now is N multiplied by the variance. So what we've got then is S, X, X. So we've got the sum of X squared. The sum of X squared we're given, 486. So 486.44 minus now the sum of X squared, which is 48.1. We need to square that and divide it by 7. So let's go ahead and do that in the calculator. So we've got 486. Then we've got 0.44. We're going to subtract away from that 48.1 squared, and we're going to divide this now by 7. So we end up with 155.924, so let's write this out, SXX is going to be 15, let's grab that back up, 155.924.924, dot, 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 and so on and so forth. So I'm going to now round this to two decimal places. I'm going to say SXX is going to be 155.92, and that's to two decimal places. And I'm going to store this in the calculator as B. In the exam, do put the full display on there, just to ensure that you're gaining full marks. So let's go ahead, shift, store, B. So it's now in as B. So that gives me now the value, I've got my 486.44, which is the value that we've got just here. So that's the sum of x squared, minus the sum of x squared over n. Okay, so let's go ahead now and do the last one. So let's just grab that up. So we've got that one in, and now we need to do SYY. So SYY is going to give me now the sum of y squared, so let's write this out, the sum of y squared minus the sum of y, which we need to square and divide by n. So S Y Y will be equal to, we've got the sum of Y squared, 613.22, minus now 52.8, which we square and divide by 7. So again, straight through the calculator, 613.22. We'll subtract away from this now the 58, uh, sorry, 52.8, 52.8 squared, which we need to divide by 7. So that's going to give me now 214, so let's write this out, sum of yy, 214 point, what was it, 597, 957, 957, 1, and scribbling these out, 1429. So 142, dot, 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 and so on and so forth. So I'm just putting that there, and then I'm just going to round this. So we're going to have syy, and that's going to be 214. 4.96 and again that's given to 2dp so 2dp and i'm going to store this in my calculator c so back to the calculator shift store c i want to keep the level of accuracy so i'm not truncating any of the answers so we'll just mark those off we can say now that s we've got sxy which is just here we've got sxx and then we've got now syy so all of those are calculated. In part B, it says calculate to three significant figures for the value of the product moment correlation coefficient between X and Y. So whatever this value is, which we call R, that will be the same as that between P and Q. So we can say that R, the product moment correlation coefficient, is S, X, Y, over the square root of S, X, X, multiplied now, and we can put these in brackets, S, Y, Y. And we saw this in the last video. So what I'm going to have then is R, and this is going to be now the 1, we've got negative 157.86. So we've got negative 157.86. And again, in the exam, just jot the 1, 4, so on and so forth on here. As you can see now, this is going to give us a negative value. The fact that the numerator is negative tells me I'm going to have the negative. 
So then we've got SX, uh, X, which is 155.924, dot, 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 and so on and so forth. We're going to multiply this now by SYY, which is the 214.957, again, dot, dot, dot. We just need to show that this is going. But if we consider what I've got now, I've got R is equal to A. That's stored in my calculator over the square root now of B multiplied by C. And I can maintain the accuracy by simply using these. So what I'm going to have then is the following. I'm going to do recall A over the square root now recall B multiplied by recall C. So these are the full, uh, full values in there. So we end up now with R, so let's write this out. R is equal to now negative 0 0.86, what was it, 862269229. Then we had now 8612, so 8 dot 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 and so on. And again, you might want to write these out. We need to give this now to three significant figures. So 0 0.862, and that now is 3. S, F, as required. So that now gives me my value of R. So we can see this is pretty strong, negative linear correlation. Minus one is absolutely perfect. So that would fit bang on a straight line. So if we just consider, if I had bang on a straight line, this is the kind of scenario that we'd have. We could put all of these points now. So let's just do this. If this was now uh, R is equal to minus one, we'd have this scenario. So they would be spot on. So in this case, what we could do is show roughly, and this really is a rough thing, this is doing something like this, okay? So it's doing something along those lines. You might have one there, you might have one there, and so on and so forth. But this is, is pretty good. It's pretty good in terms of showing that it's, it's, uh, there is a negative correlation between the two. Okay, so we've worked out now the product moment correlation coefficient between x and y. We need to write down the, the value of the product moment correlation coefficient between P and Q. The fact that it's telling me to write it down is saying now that we should know it. And the reason we know it is because they're the same. So we can show that now the value of R for now X and Y will be the same as that for P and Q. So we can say that R is going to be now negative 0 0.862. So that's that part answered. Okay, so we've done that. We need to give an interpretation of this value. Now, this is often where pupils struggle. What we've got to do is put this in context. And if we look at this now, this company is owning two petrol stations along a main road. So if we just sketch this up, and of course you don't need a sketch, but it might help you understand what's going on. So here's our main road, and we've got now these two petrol stations. So one petrol station is here, and one petrol station here. We can quite clearly see that there are only going to be a fixed number of cars going down this road in any one day. So if we think about now the sales, let's say that this one is going to be petrol station P and this one is going to be Q. So if we consider now that sales are up at P, they're going to be down at Q. Okay, so these are going to be down at Q. On the flip of this, if we have now the sales down at P, we can say now that the sales are going to be up at Q. This now is negative linear correlation. As one increases, the other decreases. So in context, as one of these petrol stations sells more, the other one sells less. Or total daily sales for one increases. As a result, total daily sales for the other decreases. And you can say the reason for that is simply now that there's a finite number of cars that can be coming along this road at any one time. Therefore, Q might take the customers from P or P might take the customers from Q. So ideally, if you're going to own two petrol stations, put one in this town and then one in the town right off the screen over here. So there we go. That's a bit of uh, interpretation too. So what we've done in this video is looked at coding. These are examples now of linear codes. So let's, let's put another one on. Let's say that we might have the following. We might say, and just taking this to be completely different, we might say P is equal to X minus 100. And we might say that Q is equal to Y. We won't always have something subtracted or added or divided here. This is simply saying now that this is a possible linear coding for two sets of data. We might, for example, have on here, we might have R and S. Highly unlikely R because of the product moment correlation coefficient. So, uh, we, But we might have, for example, M is equal to uh, X minus 3 
over now four and we might have n or t or some other uh, variable n might be y plus two and divided by six might be something along those lines so that's what we deal with generally though we'd have now y minus some value and uh, subtract it down with now it'd be something something along those lines they're just examples of that so take home point now if we're using a linear coding then the value of r the product moment correlation coefficient will be the same so we can say the correlation between p and q will be the same as the correlation between x and y